And everybody said, Amen. The Lord bless everyone in Jesus' name. And I pray that His word will benefit everyone as an individual, as a family man, family woman, as a child in the family, as parents in the family, as workers, leaders in the vineyard of the Lord in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for tonight. Thank you because you brought us together for a good purpose. And we pray your purpose will be fulfilled in every life in Jesus' name. Let the entrance of your word bring light, bring love, bring eternal life, and bring all the provisions from Calvary to us in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know it's done. In Jesus' name we pray. Another amen. God bless you. You can see them tonight. We're coming to Genesis chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 18. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, and the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet suitable for him. Look at verse 24. In verse 24, it tells us, Therefore shall a man leave his father, and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh that's the very foundation of the family family in general family everywhere and the christian family in particular in psalm 68 reading here from verse 6 psalm 68 verse 6 god said it the solitary in families. Those who are alone and they feel the loneliness and they feel the aloneness just by themselves. Solitary. The Lord God Himself set the solitary in families. The solitary man or the solitary woman, a man being alone, a woman being alone, God takes the prerogative and the initiative that he sets them in families. He brings out those that are bound with chains. There are physical chains, there are spiritual chains, there are traditional chains, and there are, you know, some kinds of uh, tribal chains that bind people, hold them in bondage. And God, when we come to God, He breaks those chains, physical, chains, natural, chains, traditional, chains, spiritual. But the rebellious dwell in a dry land. The rebellious God is planning for them. And God is saying, it's not good for you to be alone, but the rebellious that is wiser than God. The rebellious that says, it's better for me like this. I'm all right. I don't need a man. I don't need a woman. The rebellious will dry, will land, will stay, will dwell in a dry land. The rebellious that God says now, I bring you this man. I bring you this woman. Man, and this is my commandment for you. This is my instruction for you. And maybe they even come together. And the Lord says, I brought you together so that you will not live alone. A lonely life. A solitary life. I brought you together so that he will complement your life. She will complement your life. And one of them. Maybe the man says, yes, we're married, but this is the way I will go. He's still thinking alone. He's still talking to himself alone. He's still planning alone. He's still operating alone as if he wasn't married. That's a rebellious person against the plan of God. Or the woman that says, here I am. Okay, we're married. 
I don't feel like I'm married. I don't know why I got into this. I'm not ready yet to fulfill what God has appointed as a wife. She's rebellious. And that rebellious person will live and dwell in a dry land. God wants us to understand he is the creator. He knows what is best for man. He knows what is best for woman. And he has brought the two together. Matthew chapter 19, reading from verse 4. In Matthew chapter 19, reading from verse 4, and he answered this Christ talking, the Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ talking, this is the bridegroom, the bridegroom of the church, and he said unto them, have ye not read any challenge you have? The solution is, have you not read? Am I doing well in the family? Go back to the world. Have you not read? Am I fulfilling my role? Am I doing what is righteous in the family? Go back to the world. Have you not read? I'm thinking like this, I'm feeling like this, I'm thinking I want to do this to this woman. I want to do this to this man because this has happened, this has happened, and then we're thinking of what do I do? Go back to the word. Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? Look at that. About 4,000 years after creation, that Christ now was going to talk about marriage. And many years have passed between the creation and this time Christ was talking. And many marriages have taken place. We've seen the marriage of, uh, of Moses. We've seen that of Abraham. We've seen that of David. We've seen all those marriages, some good, some not so very good. And Jesus said, don't go back to them. Go back to the beginning. We are almost always tempted to compare how we're doing with Mr. So-and-so, brother so-and-so, pastor so-and-so. And so if our marriage is like theirs, we're satisfied. I'm not doing too bad. He says, no, don't stop there. Don't go to the king, David. Don't go to the father, Abraham. Don't go to anyone. Go back to the beginning. As we look at marriage and we look at ourselves, how well to be doing, how well to conduct our family life. It says he made them at the beginning male and female. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, it says and said, For this cause shall a man leave the father and the mother and shall cleave to his wife and they twain shall be one flesh shall be one united united the dwelling together that's why we say it's not the will of god for the man the husband the woman the wife to be separated even physically one living in that other country and the other living in this other country whatever the reason financial reason whatever the reason any other reason that in the family we agree together that she will be there and i will be here it's not your agreement it's what was at the beginning for this purpose for this reason for this cause shall a man leave the father some people don't leave their old family they still stay with the father that's not the will of god or they still stay with the mother for this reason for this cause shall a man leave a father and mother and shall cleave cleave uh, you know the word leave then you put a c 
behind that and you are conjoined together you cleave together you gel together you stay together you think together you plan together you see together you walk together and you exercise everything that you are trying to do all together like cleaving you have the same mind you have the same heart you have the same goal you go in the same direction it says shall cleave unto his wife and they twain shall be one flesh and then in verse 6 in verse 6 it says wherefore they are no more twain divergent they are no more twain separated they are no more twain disagreeing almost on every point they discuss they are no more twain contradicting each other expect we're talking to the children that is said this is the way to go mommy what do you say privately now between you and i you're my mommy and daddy said this is the way to go don't mind your daddy that's the way he thinks because of this uh -uh. They no more twain in the advice we give, in the counseling we give, in the leading of the family of our personal life. Wherefore, they no more twain but one flesh. What? Therefore, God has joined together. Join, cleave, the same thing. You join together. You cleave together. What therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Let no ideology put asunder. Let no management put asunder. No, let no circumstance and the situational place we find ourselves together let no economy put asunder let no religious tradition put asunder and let no self will put asunder that's the way i want to live my life it counts marriage as bondage that's the way i want to go in my life she counts marriage as bondage that's why they are, they are not divorced they're just they say just what i want to do i feel peaceful without him i feel at peace without her let no man put asunder we're looking at the rights righteousness and responsibilities in a refreshing family i pray god will refresh our families in jesus name have you gone back home united amen we're looking at three things number one we're looking at the foundation of happiness helpfulness in the cleaving family when we follow god and we do the will of god and we join together and we cleave together and we have the same mind the same spirit the same mouth the same tongue the same understanding and the same direction we're cleaving together the foundation of helpfulness in the cleaving family number two we're looking at the frustration without holiness in the common family look at the family on that street look at the family at the backyard over there look at the family at the outskirts of the christian faith they're not they think they're christians but 
they leave the outskirts of the Christian faith and they become a common family like every Dick and Harry's family like every other family the frustration without holiness in the common family number three the fountain of health in the Christ in the Christian family let's come to number one number one is the foundation of helpfulness in the cleaving of family already we'll see what God has said here is the foundation it's not good that the man should be alone partnership that they're together they're cleaving together that's the foundation it's not good that the man should be alone in case he's alone in our own case now in the case of Adam there was no other woman so there was no temptation to immorality or fornication but for the rest of us for the rest of the world because it says because of that foundational establishment of the family it says a man shall leave father adam did not have any father eve did not have any father and mother adam did not have any father eve did not have any father eve did not have any mother it's for the rest of us because of what had been done for adam and eve shall a man now for the rest of the world as there will be procreation shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife what's the foundation for the foundation of purity purity for us now purity for the man purity for the woman that's why they are together is for the purpose of partnership is for the purpose of purity and it is for the purpose of protection protection you see at that time you only had adam and eve and the animals did not have the wild nature that they had later after the fall but now the beasts of the field and the beasts on the on the street and the bees in the community they are so uh, they are so wild and they are so terrible that you alone a woman alone a man alone the challenge is there for protection that the foundation so that the man is protected the woman is protected because they are together it tells us then for our preservation protection preservation that's the foundation that the reason why God has ordained that the man the woman will be married together and they will cleave together for procreation procreation for them husband and wife to have children and the children they raise up the children as godly children that the reason why we have the man and the woman together and from the beginning that is how god made it look at uh, that verse 24 in genesis chapter 2 it says therefore not because i feel like not because i can stay by myself i don't have any problem no no god made this and because god has made this therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife there is no avoidance there is no looking the other way there is no deliberate 
kind of a separation. There is the cleaving. When I need your attention, you are there. When you need my attention, I'm there. And there is a no pretense reading newspaper for hours. Can I have your attention? You see how busy I am? Is married to the newspaper. The common family, the people of the world, they are glued to their television. And they are glued to the game. The game that is being played on television at that time. And uh, the, the wife or the child runs, daddy, daddy, I need your attention. Get out of my way. Don't block my view. Don't you see what I'm reading? He's married to the television. No, that's not the will of God. He wants you to be available. Available for each other. The Lord research our families in Jesus' name. We're looking at Ecclesiastes chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 9. Two are better than one. Two are better than one. Even if that one, like Adam, so intelligent that you could name all the animals, two are better than one. Even if that one, Adam, is so rich and he possesses everything God has made, however rich you are, however intelligent you are, God says that two are better than one. Adam did not have any sickness. Adam was, you know, quite healthy and sound. All the same, two are better than one. Whatever we have, whatever we don't have, whatever our achievement, whatever we have gathered together, whatever background we have, the word says two are better than one because they, the two, have a good reward. It's rewarding and it is beneficial. They have a good reward for their labor. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, for if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. If they fall, that's part of the reason for marriage. If they fall, Adam just came back. Adam, where did you go? I went to, you know, pick something there. And before he came back, the wife had fallen. The wife had taken of that fruit that God said, you must not eat it. Well, so far, so bad. And what should Adam have done? Well, you've done the forbidden thing. You've done the unexpected. But if one fall will fall, then the other will lift up his fellow. I need to talk to God about this situation. Look at what you've done. This is what God says should not be done. We cannot tell what the God of love and mercy and compassion, God of forgiveness, would have done. But instead of lifting up his fellow, instead of lifting up Eve, he took off that fruit also from the wife and did eat. And both of them, and that's the whole world, the whole world inside them, they are now falling. That's why we have the situation we have in the world. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he has not another to help, help, help him up. Why was the word given to the man to give him a help? meet for him. That's why marriage has been given. We're looking at Proverbs chapter 31 and we're reading from verse 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? Who can find 
Now, it is different from Adam now. Adam just stayed there. And God said, it's not good for Adam the man to be alone. I will find. I will make. I will create. And Adam was not even praying. Adam did not even know he needed a wife. But God said, the creator said, I will make a help meet for him. But now, after that time, there's so many ladies, there's so many women, there's so many sisters. Now, God has to provide who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies, far above dowry, far above the price that you paid her price, a real woman from the Lord. The price is far above rubies. Look at verse 11. In verse 11, it says, The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her. That's the real wife. It doesn't give the husband anxiety by her behavior. Doesn't give the husband anxiety through suspicion. Doesn't give the husband a kind of, um, you know, investigating. Because of she's moving this way, moving this way, and moving that way, even in his presence, the woman is acting like this, acting like that. No, that's not a Christian wife. That's not a Christian home. In a Christian home, the heart of her husband safely does safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. Look at verse 12. In verse 12, she will do him good and not evil all the days of her life that the help meet, help suitable, help fit for him. Because in her thought, she's thinking, good, what can I do for my man? In her action, she is working good. What can I do to make his life better, make his health better, and make his emotion is temper better what can i do to serve the man because she's always always planning good thinking good doing good not evil every day and there are times one of the two may be maybe sad maybe unhappy and the woman in particular, when she's unhappy, when she's sad, she doesn't say, okay, I am sad. Why should he be happy? Let me offload some of my sadness on him. I know him now. I've studied him. And I know what can make him sad, what can make him sorrowful, what can provoke him. No. The woman that God has given whose price is above rubies. She will do him good, not evil, all the days of her life. On the other hand, too, the man, the man might, you know, carry some burden from the place of work. Sad, sorrowful. The man might hear bad news from afar. And because of that, that gives him some sorrow. She, he doesn't say, look at this woman, she doesn't know any other thing is going on in the world. Always hilarious, always happy, always joyful, always jovial. I'm going to offload part of my sadness on her life. No, that's not a Christian marriage that wants the partner to be sad because I'm sad. Wants her to be down because I'm down. He also will do her good good, not evil, every day, all the 
days of his life. The Lord confirmed that in our lives in Jesus' name. Look at 2 Samuel chapter, uh, chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 11. Here is an illustration for the help we render in the marriage. You help her, she helps you. There are things you can do well that will help her. There are things she can do well to help you. And he said, If the Syrians be too strong for thee, for me, then thou shalt help me. But if the children of Amnon be too strong for thee, then I will come and help thee. You see the help on both sides, reciprocal. When you have a load to carry, emotional load to carry, spiritual load to carry, physical load to carry, some professional load to carry, and it's too heavy for you. That's why I'm here. Trust me, open up and I will support the other person too, the wife. When you have a load, you've had some news from the uh, from the far con from the far country, from the extended family, and you feel the body. Why are you quiet? Why don't you talk? Because the help is reciprocal. And when you are burdened, you have had something about the child, one of your children, but you carry the burden alone. It, the help is reciprocal. What I see where you need help, I help. What you see where I need help, you help. That is the way it should be in our marriage. Matthew chapter 19. We're reading from verse 4. And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male only one, female only one? Uh, the people who are claiming to be wiser than God, and they're playing God, and they say that. Yes, one man, two women will not be too bad. Are you wiser than God? When the world was empty and God wanted the world to be filled up, replenished, yet he didn't create two women, three or four, for Adam. Even though Adam was the only man on earth, yet the wisdom of God created just one Eve. And we go back to the beginning. That is what he, God, had ordained. By the way, Adam did not say, because he didn't even know who a woman was, describing she must be pretty, she must be this height. She must be like this. Her complexion must be like this. She must know how to cook. Who knew how to cook at that time? Before Eve was created. All those, all, all those complications in request that people are giving to God. We don't need to give God any of those requests. He has enough wisdom. And in his wisdom, he created Eve. And in his wisdom, he has given you the best. I'm waiting for another amen. amen. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, and said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be, please tell me, and a mother must not come into the family of the son, 
and separate the son from the wife and take attention from the son for the wife. The mother must not come and plant herself in between the son and the wife of the son and now dictating uh -uh, how you're cooking for my son this is what i want for my son how do you spend your salary how do you do this how do you do this no the mother must not come into the family of the son into the family of the daughter neither the father the extended family must not come in and separate them mommy before you came my husband and i were just like this and when he says a i chorus a but mommy says you came my mind is a little bit getting away from my husband that the time for the mother to consider leaving so that what God has joined together, the mother or the father or the tradition or whatever will not put asunder. It tells us in verse 6, it says, Wherefore, they are no more twain. Therefore, Jesus said, they are no more separated. They are no more apart. They are ideal. And the doctrine of Christ is not just that, okay, we have not divorced. Only at this time, I need some time. Get off my back. We are not separated. Only at this time, I need to be by myself. Jesus said, they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together. Let no man put asunder. I need an amen. amen. Let no counselor, 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 let no counselor put asunder. You know, I tell you my story, what I'm going through, how my wife is treating me. What? I know the Bible says, but... When you say, I know the Bible says, but in this situation, that counselor is about to put them asunder. It's about to plant an evil seed in the heart of that young wife, young lady. I pray God will help us to remain where the Lord has put his word in Jesus' name. Leave all those others and cleave together. And whatever the problem is, God will solve the problem in your family. He will solve the problem in my family. Say it aloud. Let heaven hear you. Your solution is confirmed in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number two now. Point number two, frustration. Without holiness in the common family. We're looking at um, 1 Timothy chapter 2. Reading from verse 15. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in child bearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness was so bright he's talking about the family that the woman the wife will be protected if they husband and wife continue they continue in faith they have the faith in the scriptures and they continue in faithfulness and they continue also in charity in love the love that ought to be between the wife and the husband and then it says and 
holiness with sobriety. Well, we're looking at what the holiness ought to be in the family. And we're looking at the people that are frustrated because there is no holiness in that common family. Look at that. I'm spelling it out. H. Harshness instead of helpfulness. Harshness instead of helpfulness. Where there is holiness in the family, there is helpfulness. I look at you and I say, something is going on. Tell me, tell me. Let's carry the body together. Helpfulness. But instead of helpfulness, harshness. In Job chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 9. Job chapter 2, verse 9. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Cause God and die. Uh, that's not helpful. The man is sick and all the body filled with boils and, uh, you know, has lost this, has lost that. And then the last straw that breaks the camel's back and saying, uh, you're still religious, you're still righteous, you're still by a Bible believer, you're still a Bible reader. With all this, come on, cause God and die. That's not help, that's harshness. Look at O there. O is opposition instead of oneness. What the Lord wants is that we're together, husband and wife. But when the husband is going this direction. Why? Go along with him. Don't oppose. Don't criticize. Don't oppress. In 2 Samuel chapter 6, reading from verse 16. And as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, my Saul's Saul's daughter looked through the window and saw the King David leaping and dancing, rejoicing before the Lord. And she despised him in her heart. That's not holiness. The proper holiness. This is the opposite. She despised him in the heart. Look at verse 20. In verse 20 it says, then David returned to bless his household. The man was still happy. And he was still on top of the, the ark of the covenant of the Lord. Has come back. And she didn't worry. Joyce and Michal, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David. And said, how glorious was the king of Israel today who uncovered himself today in the eyes of the daughters of the handmaids of his servants and one of the vain as one of the vain fellows shamefully uncovered himself that's sarcastic that's looking down the man that's disrespectful that's opposing the husband there's no holiness there holiness is oneness you and i together david is doing something and the wife didn't think that way the wife should say my husband has a good reason for doing that. My husband has a good reason for rejoicing in the presence of the Lord. And if she couldn't find the reason, she would ask the husband, Daddy, I never saw you so happy, hilarious, joyful, and even dancing in front of the rest of the people. What happened? Why are you so happy? And the husband will tell her, and they will remain one. When the husband is doing something, the wife feels, 
I never thought this should be the direction to go. Don't oppose, ask him. Let him explain and let him give you his own biblical approach and then you remain one hell lying instead of loving loving that's the real holiness but when it's all lies lies then that will not be right here comes ananias and you see it for so much you sold the land oh yes why uh, satan filled your heart to lie to the holy ghost and a few hours later uh, sapphira the wife came tell me is it for some years why have you agreed together to lie to the holy ghost love god love his word love his work and if you're going to give give and don't join deception or lying with that well they were lying instead of loving i importunity without innocence importunity importunity uh, importunity means tell me tell me tell me well it's between me and god tell me you see where that opportunity is and the man is not free to say here is it and the wife is not free to say here is it that opportunity without innocence we read in judges chapter 16 verse 16 and it came to pass when she pressed him daily pressed him daily pressed him daily with her words and uh, urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death that's delilah not the real not real why but you know daily they were almost living together like husband and wife and Samson was going to the foreign land are there not women here in Israel no get her for me for she pleases me well she lost that one but now Delilah came in the importunity importunity uh, making the man to say everything even the things that are not profitable and the things that are not going to help the man that that's the opposite of a kind of holiness holiness there should be innocence integrity in holiness but in this case now it is not innocence it is importunity i will put the pressure 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 until he cannot hold himself and then and we're looking at negligence of the new nature the lord wants us to have the new nature he has actually promised to give us the new nature but we are negligent either the husband is negligent of the salvation of the lord that gives a new heart that gives a new nature that gives the divine nature the husband is operating on the natural at the natural level the wife is operating at the spiritual level it will not match or it is the husband that is operating with a new heart a new nature and the wife is operating with a stony heart it will not match we must both have the new nature it says in second peter chapter one reading from verse three second peter chapter one verse three according as his divine power has given unto us and he can give us man and wife all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him 
that has called us to glory and to virtue. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, it says, Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises by that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature the divine nature if that's available for me why don't i go for it if that's available for her why doesn't she go for it and if we find that uh, look my wife let's sit down i want to say to start with i'm not happy with the way i'm dealing with you i want a change and i'm not sure you are happy the way you are reacting to me it's like there's too much friction stony heart or the husband stony heart or the wife we're clashing too much we're in conflict too much my wife i'm not accusing you i'm part of the problem why don't we both go to the cross and see this provision of the divine nature that God has made available for us and then your heart is soft my heart is soft and there will be no clashes anymore you know I'm not happy we're arguing I'm not happy the way I feel I'm not happy getting angry I'm not happy having this furious temper and i'm not happy to you that when the smoke is coming and the fire is burning inside me and once you see a little provocation you too you are you flare up i think both of us need to go back to calvary so that this new nature will, will not be negligent and the lord will give us that new nature in Jesus' name. He is a snare, an endangerment instead of empowerment. Endangerment. You see, there are husbands and wives, they endanger the lives of each other. Now, uh, as you are in the home, there's a place where not normally put that stool. There's a place where normally arrange all those things. But the other person feels, I think I need to rearrange something, you know, and he puts the stool there. And the light is not on. Normally when the light is on, we can see. But when the light is not on, we think we know the house very well and uh, so we just walk but the woman did not know or the man did not know that she is better half her better half as put is still there and the fellow stumbles just like that and if there are eyeglasses on the face with the face down the glasses are broken and it affects the eyes, affects the face. Or if there's any other sharp object around, something has happened. My husband, who puts this there? <laughs> Why are you asking me? Didn't you have eyes to see? We're here in the house. And so because of you now, we shouldn't put this there. We shouldn't put this there. And we have accidents in the house. Why don't we see, instead of endangering the lives of each other, see what you can do or what you can stop doing so you will empower your partner, will empower each other in Jesus' name. And people, your husband will not fall because of your carelessness. Your wife will not damage her life because of the husband's carelessness. And we're looking at uh, S now, S. There is the cell selling. 
instead of standard spreading. In Second Kings chapter, in First Kings chapter twenty-one, verse twenty-five, here we're told, but there was none like Ahab, which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel, his wife, stirred up. Jezebel, his wife, stirred up. The woman was, was in such a great control in that home that Ahab had forgotten all the standard of the scriptures he knew before Jezebel came into his life. And literally, Ahab sold himself, gave up himself. He sold his mind. He sold his thinking faculty. He sold his knowledge. He sold the very death of the personality of a man and of a king in Israel. The king in Israel should take the scriptures and read it to himself. It's only chapter 17. And he should even write and read and read so that he will keep to the word of God all the days of his life. Ahab had sold himself. No conviction. No personal thinking. No dedication anymore. No consecration anymore. Uh, in a family where either the wife had now sold herself. She had committed to evangelism before she was married. She had committed to giving to the Lord tithes and offering before she was married. And she was doing it regularly. But now she has sold conviction. She has sold courage. She has sold anything personal and sold everything to the husband. And the husband is a lousy man. He's not a believer. He's not a child of God. Or is the husband that knew the Lord a man of conviction, a man of consecration, a man of courage. But now the wife are taking his heart out. No heart. No mind, no courage, no backbone, no stamina. Because now it's no more. What does the scripture say? What does my wife say? It's no more. What does the Bible say? What does my wife say? It's no more. Christ is my Savior and Lord. What? Does my Lord say no? What does my wife say? It's no more. Will I get to heaven if I do this? Will I be ready for the rapture if I go along this route? No more. Honey, Danny, wife, better have. What do you say? Nice, you ask me. She likes to be in control of Ahab totally. And the man sold himself. I pray you will not be like that. S is scheming instead of supporting. I seek was old now. The eyes of Isaac were dim. And the wife, well, if Rebecca did not know, who else will know? She knew that the man was now not able to see very well because of old age. And Isaac told Esau, go bring me the kind of venison, the kind of food that I like. And when Rebecca had that, she started scheming. Wives should not scheme. Wives should support. If you're going to act like a supporter, what would Rebecca have done? Rebecca would have gone while Esau went to find, to do the hunting. Rebecca should have gone to Isaac with all respect and love 
and prayerfulness. My husband, I heard, I overheard what you were telling our son, Esau. I appreciate what you want to do, but I told you before they were born that when I was having difficulty in the pregnancy, and I told God, this is what God told me, that Jacob will carry the blessing of Abraham and Isaac, my dear husband. That's support you. Why don't we ask God, since this is what God told me, and I shared it with you, and then if Esau came with this new knowledge of Isaac, he can still bless Isaac, but he will not give the final blessing of Abraham and Isaac to him because God had ordained that he will be the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Scheming would not have been necessary in our families. That's what ruins our families. That's what destroys our families because of the scheming instead of supporting we're coming to point number three now point number three the fountain of health in the christian family the fountain of health in the christian family the lord has given us the christian family so many promises Exodus chapter 15 verse 26 that's a great promise Exodus chapter 23 verses 25 and 26 that's a great promise and Psalm 103 verses 3 to 5 that's a great fulfillment of the promise of hell Psalm 105 reading them from verse 37 that's a great promise Psalm 107 verse 20 that's a great promise and Isaiah 53 verses 4 and 5 that's a great promise and First Peter chapter 2 verse 24 that's a great promise for John chapter 1 verse 2 that's a great promise we have the fountain of health in the Christian family and both husband and wife should age gracefully and should age healthily happy holy and healthy God confirm in our families in Jesus name and look at Ephesians chapter 5 we're well, looking at verse 22 wives submit yourselves unto your own husband as unto the Lord culture does not teach that but that's what the scripture teaches tradition does not teach that that's what the scripture teaches and the psychology of the world does not teach that this is what the scripture teaches civilization the west they don't teach this this is what the scripture teaches wives submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the lord and in verse 23 verse 23 says for the husband is the head of the wife culture civilization all these ideas and all the books coming from the west the white doesn't teach this what do they teach 50 50 actually in some cultures now the wife 60 percent and the wife and the husband 40 percent but even the people that are trying is 50 50 but no the husband is the head of the wife give me a good amen, amen. only the sisters let the sisters give me a good biblical amen, amen. for the husband is the head of the wife even as christ is the head of the church 
and he is the savior of the body look at verse 25 in verse 25 husbands love your wives let the brothers the husbands the fathers let them say good amen, amen. Uh, but you know don't listen to all these stories they tell in the world and all these uh, special special videos they prepare and all these people that uh, they're trying to kind of influence and they're trying to infiltrate into the mind into the heart of the believers and you know husbands love your wives they don't follow this anymore even as Christ also loved the church even as Christ also loved the church how would you think when the church needs the attention of Christ Christ is absent is doing something with the angels in heaven it he doesn't have time to listen to the church how about that what do you think the husband is so busy and so committed to this there this there doesn't have any time to listen to the wife and the wife cries alone and the wife suffers alone and yet the husband is not there it should not be like that from tonight everything will change you know the way i like to preach is that when i finish preaching if anybody is doubting the message the person can go to my wife and say with all due respect mommy uh, that is a good preacher and he knows all these scriptures and i find it difficult to you know do all this mommy with all due respect how would you say that daddy is doing this at home how many of you would like to go and ask her <laughs> i'll tell you by the grace of god what i preach I practice and I pass that same grace to you yeah. what you preach how you tell other people you will practice in Jesus name yeah. one day at a time love in your heart you'll do it in Jesus name yeah. and then it says even as Christ also loved the church and gave and gave and gave himself for it look at the health we're talking about health in the family each homely heart holiness homely heart holiness that's a kind of holiness that we we'll practice outside and you keep yourself isolated from the world separated from the world but there's another kind of holiness in the home and that is homely homely the holiness that feeds the home look at first timothy chapter 2 verse 8 in verse 8 it tells us i will therefore that men husbands included pray everywhere lifting up holy hands without wrath without doubting that's holiness especially in the home no wrath no anger no slapping anybody no hot temper no wrath and there is no doubting and you're lifting up holy hands look at verse 15 in verse 15 it says notwithstanding she shall be saved he's talking about the woman now she shall be saved protected in childbearing if they husband and wife continue in faith in charity and holiness 
was so bright. So that the homely heart holiness. Health E is the expedient essential expense as we spend money. This is where holiness comes in. Transparency comes in. And it's not that, you know, the woman is taking so much money without even letting the husband know that this is what she's earning. She's spending on this, spending on that. No. All the essential uh, expense, we put it on the table before we send the money to that, to this, to that. My wife, this is what I'm planning. Can we look at it together? Okay, my husband, that's good. But you understand, house rent is essential. You understand, food, and you know what a bag of rice costs now. And so we cannot be spending now like we spent five years ago. Things have changed. And so essential expense, school fees, did you hear, did you see the write-off from the school of our children? They have increased this and that. And uh, this all we have, we plan together. That's holiness. It's the expedient, essential expense. It tells us in First Timothy chapter 5, reading from verse 6, But she that liveth in pleasure, is dead while she lives. A woman that uh, does not care how much food we have, how much food we don't have at home, whether we have enough to cover school fees or not, she is all for pleasure. They're doing marriage over there and they are taking a kind of a clothes and she goes for it. And somebody is uh, doing wedding in uh, where now Czechoslovakia, and uh, you know she's already preparing buying ticket. We don't have the money. Well, look to that. I must attend that Czechoslovakia wedding. We must spend in a way that we're conscious of the need in the family, but. She that liveth in pleasure is dead when she liveth. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, and these things give in charge that they may be blameless. In verse 8, verse 8 says, But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, husband, wife, children, he has denied the faith. He might teach, but he has denied the faith. He might testify, but he has denied the faith. He might sing wonderful songs, but he has denied the faith. This holiness that includes essential expedient expense and the family must be incorporated and is worse than an infidel. He is appropriate, affectionate assistance. That's, that's what keeps the home healthy. She needs my help. I help. He needs your help. Your help appropriate. Appropriate, affectionate, assistance and we do it with love we're not grumbling we're not grudging we're not complaining we're not murmuring appropriate affectionate assistance one to the other in john chapter 13 verse 34 it says a new commandment i give unto you that she love one another as i have loved you, that she also love one another. Verse 35, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, my followers, if ye have loved one to another. And the health also means learning 
to live and to cleave in love. That's holiness. In the marriage, in the family, the husband and the wife, we learn to live. Learn to leave the father and the mother. Would you know, brothers and sisters, that is the beginning of leaving. To cleave to your husband, to cleave to your wife. Now, apart from father and mother, we learn that your close friends before you were married, if they still have your attention, you have to learn to leave them. You don't hate them, just like you don't hate your father, you don't hate your mother, but they take your attention. And when your husband needs your attention, you are so engrossed in the relationship that your heart with the old friend might be a lady like yourself. But your husband is noticing that your love for that lady is so much that it makes you neglect him. And when he needs your attention, he cannot get that attention when that old lady friend is on the phone. We learn that this will not help. We learn to leave. It might be a kind of work you like to do voluntary work money paying job whatever but it is hindering the marriage it is destroying the marriage it is opposing the togetherness the love the concentration we ought to have in the marriage we learn to leave there are things that if they will not help the family the husband will learn to leave and the wife will learn to leave so as to cleave in love to your husband and to your wife. We're looking at Genesis again, chapter 2, and we're looking at verse 24. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 24, it says, Therefore shall a man leave his father and the friends of the father and his mother and the friends of the ladies like the mother and shall cleave unto his wife and that when shall be one flesh give me a good amen, amen. that amen is not headquarters amen. amen in ephesians chapter 5 we're looking at verse 28 ephesians chapter 5 reading from verse 28 so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies he that loveth his wife loveth himself. Verse 29, for no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it even as the Lord the church. Verse 30, in verse 30, for we are members of his body and of his flesh and of his bones. Verse 31, for this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall be joined, shall cleave unto his wife and they too shall be one flesh. Verse 32, in verse 32, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Verse 33, it says, Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love, so love, so love his wife, even as himself. And the wife see that she reverences, she honors, and she respects the husband. Look at uh, the next letter there, T. is tender, truthful tongue. T, 
tender, truthful tongue. Tender, truthful tongue. Uh, we can say anything with different tones. We can say amen with tender tone or with harsh tone. Discouraged tone, sarcastic tone. We can say good in soft tone or in sarcastic tone. We can say well done in a soft tone, helpful tone, or we can say it in a harsh tone. The way we talk to each other at home, husband and wife, we need to learn the new language that the wife will say, I appreciate that. Even when she is correcting me, even when the woman in an honorable, in a kind of respectful way is pointing out, should that be, should that be, the tone is sought. We're looking at uh, Proverbs chapter 15, verse 1. A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. Tender temper, tender tone, tenderness in the truth, tenderness in the tongue. Age is hygienic, happy homeliness. Hygienic, happy homeliness. We're homely and every place is clean and things are well arranged we don't allow mosquitoes to come in it's, uh, it's not too it's not too costly go buy a mosquito net we don't allow some you know some things to be exposed that worms will be there and all that let's keep the home hygienic and let the home be so clean as if we were expecting uh, a visitor. The husband is higher and greater than the visitor. So if we can prepare the home for the visitor, prepare that home for the husband. Happiness in your homes. Merry, merriment in your home. Joy in your home. Health in your home. And my prayer for every home in our church, there'll be a great upliftment in Jesus' name. Amen. Whatever the needs are, the Lord will supply. Amen. Forget the past, let's go back home and raise up the standard of happiness, the standard of holiness, and the standard of health, and the standard of helpfulness. Better homes for every one of us in Jesus name let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer let's take everything we have learned to the Lord that the Lord himself will help us to make necessary adjustments necessary correction necessary interpersonal relationship open your mouth Talk to the Lord in prayer. Help. Help. Help meet suitable for your partner. Show some kindness more than before. No harshness. No opposition. No lying, no importunity that drives the man away from himself, no importunity that oppresses the woman, no negligence, no endangering. Of the other person's life. No sell selling. No scheming. Let there be proper holiness in the home. 
help. Helpfulness, help each other. Let there be oneness, be together, think alike, talk alike, plan alike. Love and loyalty, transparent love, loyalty. Think about that. Innocence, integrity, intercession in the family, new nature, new heart, new tongue and new language. Tell the Lord empowerment encourage that encouragement will empower him that encouragement will empower her that encouragement will empower the children empowerment standard spreading spread the standard. The standard of what we're learning, standard of scripture, standard of the gospel, standard spreading, support. Let there be support without complaint. Support without grumbling. Support without weariness. Support. So God can erase frustration for my families. Then he will open up the fountain of health. The fountain of health in the family. There will be homely heart holiness. The husband holy the wife holy towards each other. Hearts together. Let there be good money spending, expedient, essential expense affection be affectionate where is smile it's always be frowning at home who has offended you again Your disposition, your expression, your interaction, your speech, your language, appropriate, affectionate assistance. Learn to live. Learn to leave the old boys. Learn, learn to leave the old girls. Learn, learn to leave. This is the way we did it when I was a teenager. Learn to leave. And learn to cleave. 
to cleave in love. Be tender. Don't make your family an army barracks. Be tender. Be soft. Don't shout on the man. You're talking to an individual. You don't need a microphone for that. Don't shout on the woman. Why now? Be soft in your language. If something is happening to your temper, cool it down before you speak. Be truthful. That's who you are. You're a truthful man, a truthful woman. If you're a child of God, and when talking, don't allow anger to make you fast, fast, fast. I can't hear what you are saying. There's too much temper in your words. There's something in the heart, like the fire of fury is burning, quench it before you speak. Hygienic, I'm sure you are not spitting, spitting everywhere. I'm sure any unclean uh, way of blowing your nose and Mokos here and there. I'm sure that is not there anymore. I'm sure you're a homekeeper, homemaker. And those places are clean. I'm sure that all the stumbling things you can take out of the way so we don't cause accident in the home. Happy, happy, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Healthy, homeliness, homeliness, homeliness. In Jesus' name we pray. The Lord has answered your prayer. Things will never be the same again. Yeah. All your needs, all your desires, all your wants, all your aspirations for yourself, for your husband, for your wife, for your children, for the family, the Lord grants you in Jesus' name. Yeah. Expectations will become realization. Yeah. What are you? Here I am. What are you? Father, in Jesus' name. Pour your love on your children, on your husbands, on the wives, your love more and more in Jesus' name. All we have learned today, make it a reality in every family. And whatever needs our families have, Lord, I pray that you supply according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus in Jesus name where there is joblessness miraculously provide for your people where there is childlessness oh Lord give them miracle children in Jesus name where there's been a kind of misunderstanding because I'm holding to my way and he is holding to his own way. Lord, I pray, soften the heart of everyone to be united together in Jesus' name. For the rest of our lives, our families will be better than what it was in the past. 
even those who have good families nice families wonderful families lord make your goodness higher deeper broader in every family in jesus name joy 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 let the joy of the lord be the strength of everyone wipe our tears away and lord let the goodness of the lord reign in every family from now on we know you have answered we know that when we get back home things will be much 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 better than ever before confirmation in every life fulfillment in every life manifestation in every life thank you lord we know it is done in jesus name we pray